Okay, in this uh, section of the class we're going to be talking about multiplying polynomials. Last time we learned how to add and subtract these guys and now we're going to start multiplying them together and we're going to learn about something uh, pretty cool called the FOIL method. Uh, you probably learned that in your class there and it's very very simple. I'll show you the, the details and we'll do a lot of problems. So let's start out with something fairly easy. Let's multiply this together. Um, 3x squared multiplied by 4x cubed. Okay, um, so we've got 3x squared times 4x cubed. Well, the first thing I can do is I can multiply the numbers together. 3 times 4 is 12, right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very explicit with this first example. Uh, what I have left over here is x squared times x to the third. Does everybody see that? We have 3 times 4 and I just made that equal to 12 and I also have x squared times x to the third but we can rewrite this as 12 and then x squared times x to the third is simply x to the fifth and you can go back and look at uh, the video on how to multiply exponents to convince yourself that that's the case when you have two exponents with the same base and you multiply you can simply add the exponents there okay so that's that's fairly easy um, what if we have something like 2 x squared y to the third times 3x to the third y squared. How would I multiply that? Again, I can go ahead and multiply the numbers. That's going to be 2 times 3 is 6. And I'm going to multiply x squared times x to the third. That's going to give me x to the fifth and y to the third times y squared is going to give me y to the fifth. Um, because the x squared times x to the third, I can add the exponents and I can get that, and the y to the third times y squared is going to give me that. I can't really simplify this anymore because these are different variables under here, so you really can't, you really can't do anything. It's sort of like apples and oranges. You can't really like, add those exponents together or anything. And uh, just sort of as a review, what if I had something like x squared times y to the third and this entire thing raised to the fifth power? Um, well, if you remember back from our exponent class, when I have something that's you know some product of something multiplied together in the inside and the entire thing is raised to an exponent, I can sort of distribute and apply this exponent to each term, which is going to give me x squared, which is the first term, that's going to be to the fifth power times y to the third to the fifth power and simplifying this a bit further if you go back to the exponent class we had when you have some exponent x squared raised to another exponent all you have to do is multiply these two exponents together so that for the x it's going to be x and 2 times 5 is 10 and for y 5 times 3 is 15 and if this is a little bit rusty to you, just go back to the exponent class and I've got dozens of examples in there about how to, how to do that. This is sort of just a review. Okay, now let's um, take something a little bit different. What if I have three parentheses x plus four? And this is, this is sort of a review, um, but I have some number multiplied by some, some parentheses and on the inside of the parentheses I've got some things added together here. Well, I use the distributive property and I, and I distribute this 3 in to each of these terms. The first term is going to be 3 times x, which is 3x. And the second term is going to be 3 times 4, which is simply 12. And that's how you, that's how you simplify this and expand it out. Uh, what if I have something like 3x parentheses x minus 2? Like that. It's really the same story, except in this case now I'm going to I'm going to distribute this whole thing, this 3x into each term. So I'm going to I'm going to write this out and be real explicit here. Uh, it's going to be 3x times x um, minus 3x times 2. And the reason there's a minus here is because there was a minus here to begin with. So to be explicit, this is going to be 3x squared, because x times x is x squared, minus 6x. 2 times 3 is 6, and the x just comes along to the right. So I've distributed this 3x in. 
And, and this step here is kind of just to make it clear to you, to you guys watching the video, but really, if you multiply this in, you know it's going to be 3. It's going to hang out in the front because there's, there's a 1 here. x times x is x squared, so you could go straight to that step. And then for the next one, it's definitely going to be minus because negative 2 times positive 3x gives you a negative, and 2 times 3 is 6, and the x just comes along for the ride. So I kind of, yeah, I'm kind of ex, you know, exploding the, um, you know, the answer into a bunch of steps, but that's mainly for to illustrate illustrate the point and I would suggest doing that in all of your problems um, you know initially until you understand exactly what's going on and can work these uh, work these problems in your sleep and that'll take some time okay so let's continue on with a couple of the slightly um, you know fairly easy examples and we'll get into some foil here which would be kinda cool um, just to beat this to death, what if I have like 3xy parentheses x plus y? Same story, different verse. I'm going to distribute 3xy multiply by x, and, it's going to, and then it's going to be plus 3xy multiply by y. I'm going to distribute this whole thing in to each term. Okay, so what I'm going to have is 3xy times x plus 3xy times y. And then to simplify this, this is simply going to be 3x squared y, because x times x is x squared, and y just comes along for the ride, plus 3xy squared for the same reason. y times y gives me y squared. Okay? Um, Now what I want to do is normally, you know, in, in algebra I kind of, uh, I just do a lot of examples. I'm trying to just show you a lot of examples and, and sort of learn it by doing. And I'm, I'm a very big believer in that. But for this next thing I'm going to show you a little bit of background behind why it's this way. Because um, I think it'll make it easier to understand. Let's do something that we haven't done yet in this class. Um, what if I have something like x plus y times uh, a plus b. I'm just making up something here. Okay. Now this is interesting. Okay. You're multiplying these things together, but it doesn't really look like the problem before, where you could just simply distribute something in. Okay. Um, and so you're kind of like, well, geez, what do I do? How do I multiply this stuff together? Well, if you remember, this is going to be an aside. Um, in the other problem, if it was like x parentheses a plus b, how would we do that? Well, I would I would distribute the x in and multiply it by each term. Okay. Well, you can treat this the same way. It's just you treat this big fat thing out in front as as if it were x, and you distribute this big fat thing in to each term, just like that. Okay. So let's do that. That's perfectly legal. I'm going to pretend that this thing out in front is x and I'm going to distribute it in just like I would anything else. So let's do that. What would I get if I did that? I would get x plus y times a, right, plus x plus y times b. It's exactly the same thing as here. It's, it's just as if I, instead of x I put x plus y. Okay. Now suddenly this is something I can do. I can distribute this a in like this, and I can distribute this b in like this, because this is something I know how to deal with. So let's do that. I'm going to get ax plus ay plus bx plus by. Okay. So what do I have here? Okay. I'm going to show you by example that this is basically the FOIL method that you that you learn in class. Okay. Um, what we have here is I have four terms. Okay. When I do it the way that I know how to do it, I end up with four little terms here. This is one. This is another term. Another term. And another term. Notice that one of these terms corresponds to multiplying the first two things together, a x. Okay. Another of these terms 
corresponds to the, multiplying the inner terms together, a times y. Another term corresponds to multiplying the outer two terms together. And the final term corresponds to multiplying these terms together, by. So, these brilliant mathematicians that write textbooks have created a little simple method to do this, and they call it the FOIL method. F O well, yeah, see, I've actually, let's see, a y is inside. Well, do it this way. This is the forward two terms multiplied together, okay? This is the inside term multiplied together. This is the outside terms multiplied together, and these are the last terms multiplied together. And because I can rearrange this, these are all added together, what I can do is I can rearrange this to spell the word F-O-I-L, which is FOIL. So, the bottom line that I wanted to show you here, because from now on we're not going to go through this garbage, okay? From now on, when you see something in parentheses added together, multiplied by another set of parentheses with some stuff added together, you can cut to the chase and cut straight to the answer if you just remember this right here. F-O-I-L. Multiplied the first terms plus the multiplication of the outside terms, plus the multiplication of the inside terms, plus the multiplication of the last terms. Forward, inside, outside, last. And if you do that, you will get this set of terms, and you'll always get the right answer. So burn that in your head. Pretty much the rest of the section, that's all we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do the foil. And like I said, I normally don't go into lecture mode, but I wanted to show you that there's nothing magic about FOIL, okay? In the textbooks, they're pretty much going to tell you, oh, you solved this using the FOIL method. And you're like, well, okay, whatever, some math guy figured that out. Um, it's really no different than anything we've been dealing with so far in the class. It's exactly the same thing. It's just there's a little shortcut you can apply. So let's apply this to an example. What if I told you A plus 4, parentheses, A plus 5. Okay, now you should look at that and you should say, I want to multiply these together. It's a parenthesis with something added times a parenthesis with something added. I immediately can use the FOIL method. Okay, so let's do that. What are the first two terms multiplied together? A times A gives me A squared. What are the outside two terms multiplied together? A times 5. Got to put a plus. 5A. What are the inside two terms multiplied together? 4 times a is equal to 4a. And what are the last two terms multiplied together? 5 times 4 is 20. And I can simplify this a little bit because 5a and 4a are like terms, so this can leave me with a squared plus 9a plus 20. And this is the answer. When you multiply this stuff out, you get a squared plus 9a plus 20. Um, and, and really all you need to do is memorize the shortcut, F-O-I-L, forward, inside, outside, last. Let's do another one. What if I had something like 3x minus 2, parentheses, x plus 4. Same thing. It's a parentheses with some addition or subtraction, parentheses, some addition or subtraction, so I can use the FOIL method. The first two terms, 3x times x, is 3x squared, because 3 times 1 is 3, and then x times x is x squared, okay? The inside terms, negative 2 times x, remember you've got to keep your signs in there, is negative 2x. Um, the outside terms, I'm kind of doing it backwards, F, it's F-O-I-L, but I did the inside terms first. The outside terms are 3x times 4, which is... 12x, and the last term is negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. So I've got a minus 8 over here. And when I simplify this, I get 3x squared, negative 2x plus 12x is 